Hello everyone. In the low-lying bayous of states like Louisiana and Georgia, the stillness of the water carries a menace. Alligators, silent, cold-blooded, and instinctual for centuries, creep closer to homes, farms, and barns with each passing night. Fences are no barrier. Barking dogs are silent. Locals speak of missing calves, torn nets, and glowing eyes just beyond the tree line. It's no longer enough to wait or watch. When the predators get too close, we know it's time to fight back. Armed with rifles, boats, and a fire fueled by loss, we plunge into the wetlands, where every splash can be a warning and every shadow can bite. One more, one more, one more, one more. The call came in from a ranch near Falcon Lake, two calves missing, fences ripped like tissue paper, and muddy trails leading straight to the water's edge. By the time we got there, the rancher's voice was hoarse with urgency. As we neared the shore, we moved in pairs, one scanning through binoculars, the other with his finger on the trigger. Cut. Then, under a fallen willow, I saw it, just a faint outline of ridged armor above the waterline. I crouched, steadied my sights behind my eyes, and fired. The beast writhed, tail kicking the waves, then collapsed. Eleven feet of cold muscle fell in one perfect shot. Later that day, we moved upriver, where the crocodiles had been reported again. The temperature was brutal, melting the mud under our boots, and the reeds offered little cover. Just as we rounded a bend, we spotted a second crocodile sunning itself near a feeder channel. Bigger. Older. Its skin looked like scarred rock. I raised my rifle as it raised its head slightly, sensing us. The bullet went off, too far ahead. It twisted violently and disappeared into the water. For 20 minutes we waited, eyes glued to every ripple. But the swamp swallowed it. When a crocodile escapes, it does not forget. Yep, yep, yep. I stood barefoot on the bow, bow in hand, watching the shadows move. Timing was everything. I waited for one to drift close enough, then let fly, its heavy fiberglass shaft cutting through the water like a spear. The time between release and impact was long enough for me to hold my breath, wondering if I had accounted for the refraction. When the line tightened and the reel turned, I knew I had hit the target. There is nothing more satisfying than pulling a strong fish from deep water, knowing that patience, precision, and a little courage were needed to accomplish the task.
Here it is. Thank you. How about that? By late afternoon, we were in Lasau County, near an abandoned cattle trail that had been converted into a waterhole. The area looked quiet, but the silence felt wrong. No birds. No frogs. Just heat and tension. Then, a low growl. I turned just in time to see an alligator dart out of a shady ravine, teeth sharp. It was inches away. I dropped to one knee and fired twice, one missed, one hit. The monster rolled, hit the roots of a mesquite tree, and finally stopped. Thirteen feet. Its belly was bulging with flesh. I walked unsteadily. It had been watching us the whole time. Good. I feel like I killed a T-Rex. Huge pressure. In the dry plains west of Brownsville, we stalked an alligator that was legendary. Locals said it pulled full-grown pigs from their pens, with a scar on its tail and eyes like burning coals. We set up camp just before dusk near an irrigation ditch. Hours passed. Then a splash. My heart pounded. First we spotted the tail, trailing along the bank like a rope. It turned toward us. I shot, and it hit home. It bucked, dived, and then rose to the surface, writhing. My companion put a second shot into its skull. It sank slowly. We winched it out. Fifteen feet long and nearly nine hundred pounds. It had been king of the trail. But not anymore. As the sun sank below the horizon and the marsh turned black and still, I took to the water with my bow trained on me. The only light came from a red-filtered headlamp and the occasional moonlight flickering across the water. Every ripple and splash could signal the presence of a lurking giant reptile. I moved slowly, searching for the glint of eyes just above the waterline. Oh, good shot, Luke. Pop him. Hard. When I finally spotted a pair of glowing eyes staring back at me from 20 yards away, I took a steady breath and drew back my bow, my heart pounding in my chest. The silence was broken only by the soft creak of flexing limbs. A clean shot to the back of the skull was all I could muster, there were no second chances on a hunt like this. <laughs> Got him! Watch out! Oh. Right there, get him. Not every moment was clean or clear. At an irrigation ditch, I fired a hasty shot after hearing a snort in the reeds. The crocodile darted into view, but my bullet missed. It spun, tail lashing, the water turning to foam. Yeah, okay, good shot. I rolled over and fired again, this time hitting it in the upper back. It writhed, rolled over, and went still. The mistake cost me a safe distance, and nearly lost my composure. 
Lesson learned, patience kills. Panic invites danger. We tracked another alligator across the muddy banks of the Rio Grande near a flooded orchard. It left footprints as wide as a man's chest. We followed them for miles. Reload. Reload again. Reload again. Finally, we found it, half submerged in an irrigation pond. My companion climbed up a small ledge to get a better look, and I waited below. He took pictures. The alligator didn't even stir. Just slowly sank, leaving a pool of blood behind. We waited almost an hour before pulling it out. It was over 16 feet long. This one was a true river monster. On our final day, we returned to a remote spillway near Lake Lacoma. Locals reported hearing something pounding against a concrete wall at night. Oh yeah! As the sun set, the darkness grew long and quiet. Then, as if summoned from legend, it rose from the water, a beast larger than any before. It looked straight at us. I snapped a picture. The shock nearly threw me off balance. The gator thrashed, slapped the water, and then sank. We recovered its body at dawn. 17 feet. The largest gator ever recorded in the area. Its skin was like armor, its teeth were razor sharp. Yeah! Hunting alligators with rifles in South Texas is more than just an act of policing. It's a confrontation with an ancient predator in a land that's becoming wild again. This isn't hype or ghost stories. It's flesh and scales, muscle and instinct. Every hunt is a gamble, every shot a question of survival. Perfect shot! And while rifles offer an edge over human strength, they don't promise safety, just a fighting chance. Mission accomplished, but not all is lost, the fight has only there, just begun. Now she got her. Boom! Yeah.